Let's do a quick test. See how we looking. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. A quick test. Yep, we're good. We are live. Let me shut this off. What's up, guys? We got ourselves a game show to watch here. And give me one second. I'm just um, setting up for it. That's all. But yeah, we got a game show to watch, people. Um, supposedly, there's going to be some PS5 games here. So uh, I'm actually a little hyped for that. Could y'all do me a huge favor? Could y'all um, share this out for your boy? I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Everybody's already here. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Oh, shout out to the finest. I actually couldn't find the stream. He's the reason I found the stream for you guys. Shout out to the finest. Also, shout out to our channel members. Um, the emotes have officially been uploaded for you guys. As you see, Ice Queen Gaming is already testing them out. You guys want to become a channel member? It is literally a dollar. And um, you have access to cool emotes, etc., etc. So we got less than two minutes for this show starts. And hopefully you guys don't hear any background noise. Do you guys hear any background noise by any chance? So I can address that. I don't think you guys do hear it, though. I think you guys are good. Paradox, what up? <laughs> oh, man. Roman, what's up? Yeah, I'm doing a lot better. The finest, thank you. Um, Briar Reels, what's up? Ice Queen Gaming, I said what's up, but what's up? Uh, who else is in here? Lackey G, what up? Hustle and motivates in the building. What's up, brother? What's up, Blue? Dribble. Brad, what's going on? Yo, Brad, I agree, man. What, what's up with that game? Man, I haven't heard anything for Hogwarts, bro. I haven't heard a thing. I would love to hear some more about Hogwarts. What's up, Rhymer? What's up, bro? I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling. We'll see what's up, man. Shout out to Barry. Barry was talking about um, Horizon. You know, we need info on Horizon. I couldn't agree with him more. I really, I couldn't agree with him more. Uh, you know, talking about buying stuff is one thing. Showing off the games is another. So shout out to Barry. Um, he made a good point. He's doing a stream too. But um, yeah, he made a good point. Just relaxing. Okay. I hear you, dog. We got to get you on RGT soon. Definitely got to get you on RGT soon, bro. What's up, uh, Superior Artist? What's up, brother? You didn't hear about this? Yeah, ironically, um, I didn't hear much about this either until uh, I got a reminder from the finest about it. Hopefully we get something. Yeah, that's another thing, yeah. There was no advertisement for this, but we'll see what's up. Maybe you'll get some, some interesting announcements here. All right, so we're waiting on them to start the stream. We're pretty much at showtime. Uh, we're, we're, we're actually early. We're on the point here. I'm going to refresh the page a few times, see if, uh, you know, they started. Usually that's how YouTube operates, that little delay for them. We'll wait a few more minutes. Don't hit restart again. Still trying to get a PS5? Oh, man, listen. There's, like, an issue going on with, like, chips and stuff like that. Like, even the 3080, 3090, and 3070, etc. There's going to be a massive, like, just lack of them, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be impossible to get one for a while. I mean, you can get one, you know, if you're lucky. I mean, I'm going to keep doing everything I possibly can, especially on Twitter, to alert you guys, you know, to when stuff is available. Like, I do that all the time. Some of you guys get lucky. You get your PS5s. But for the most part, even I can't even guarantee you'll get one at all, you know? They're, like, gone in 60 seconds. They either got bots or the systems, you know, are weird. I mean, Sony had their store ready to go for like you know the whole thing where they were combating bots but it's like sony they have like so little supply it's like bro <laughs> there's no guarantee you get one what's up alfonso she is doing great she's doing absolutely fine she's doing great thank you for asking she's a lot better we're, we're both fine we're both great a lot better than we felt in a long time all right we're waiting on these guys to start this Last of Us 2 is incredible. I did another playthrough. Yeah, Last of Us 2 is great. It's a good game. I just didn't like um, one part of the game. That's it. 
I ain't like one certain part of it. Other than that, gameplay, um, you know, sound design, all that stuff. You can, bro, they, they really stepped it up with Last of Us 2. So, it's really good for those um, categories. What's up, Kryptos? What's up? I didn't even see you, bro. What's up? Um, Bray in the building. What's up, brother? My Bloodborne, Game of the Year, and Dark Souls Trilogy imports came in. Nice. Very nice. Um, so we're waiting on these guys to start this. Come on, guys, what's up? <laughs> I like stalling. Random, what's up, random? That's a hilarious name, <laughs> random. Random idiot gamer <laughs> or ready to online. <laughs> oh, so you like Abby? Yeah, Abby's Abby's well written. She's well written. She's really well written. More than likely, though, um, you know, because when they eventually carry this on, I'm guessing she's the main character, probably. More than likely, she's the main character. I mean, I don't see them doing much with Ellie at this point. Ellie's kind of done. So I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with Ellie. <laughs> I honestly don't. Unless they do some stuff like, okay, Abby's the main character in the second one or the third one. And then um, they'll have like DLC for Ellie. Like, hey, you guys wonder what happened to Ellie? Well, here's Ellie. She's right here. She's doing this. This is where she went. So. Make sure it was like no thing on I mean. Bro, they mad late. Everybody in the chat saying the same thing. They are mad late. What's up with this? Come on. I'm chilling, Bray. We chilling up in there. We out here. Um, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Where'd you see that at? Oh, you must be now. I don't know where you got that from. Did you see PlayStation Twitter account saying Ghost of Shima getting a movie? Yeah, I saw it. Ghost of Shima's getting a movie. Um, I have high hopes for it. I just hope it doesn't end up being like um, Resident Evil. But it's, it's supposedly made by the director who did John Wick. So that's good. I mean, that, that could translate into something really, really dope. Something very, like, iconic. You know, if it's, if it's really impactful. They really knock it out the park. Ghost of Shima was dope, man. It was definitely dope. One of my favorite. Uh, let's see here. This <laughs> man said troubleshooting gaming. <laughs> what is this? I don't know who these guys are. Those guys always be in my DM. Hit that like button, guys. Got 100 people up in there. Let's go. Uh, get notified. YouTube's been acting weird with me. <laughs> it's very weird. It's your boy. Pop out content. They're like, Ryan, where you been at? I'm like, dog, I dropped the video yesterday. I didn't see it. Well, there you guys go. There's your answer. YouTube broken. <laughs> uh, what's up, Guabzilla? So, Last of Us 3 will be split into two parts, maybe three abs and lebs. 
one flashback of Joel and Tommy during their dark days in the past and Ellie searching for the cure in the future. See, I don't even think the cure is going to come into question in part three, honestly. I don't even think they give a shit, to be fair with you. You know what I mean? Like, they kind of, like, eliminated all point of them actually searching for a cure in the first one. And they kind of already established that in, like, the like the earlier stages of um, Last of Us Part 2. It's like the, the cure is the last thing on their minds. It's just all about, you know, just living out their days. But as far as um, Abby and Lev, yeah, probably. You'll probably get more context with Abby and Lev in the, um, in the future. You want to kill Ellie with Abby? Oh, I hated that scene, man. I was like, bro, I do not want to beat the hell out of... Uh, I don't want to beat the hell out of Ellie. And then it's like, bro, it's, it kind of shows you the sadistic nature of Ellie in a sense. Because Ellie legit... Um, Ellie kind of reminds you of that dude. What's that dude's name from the first um, from the first game? What was it, David? Yeah, I'm talking about the little, uh, the little creeper dude who, like, stalks Ellie. Like, tracks her. Yo, it was like Ellie was on steroids that entire encounter. Like, she was on another level of just savage. She was dropping bombs everywhere. Like, dog, she was just... That's why Ellie had to learn uh, to live for more than herself. Uh, I don't even see. That's the thing. Yeah, live for. <clears throat> well, how do I? How do I? How do I say this? Again, I don't. I don't see her really. I don't see her going down this path of the cure, man. I really don't. I don't. I don't see her going like, oh yeah, it's over. Let me go this way and get a cure. I, I just. I don't see her, bro. I, I really don't see it. It could happen, though. I mean, it, it could most certainly happen. I'm, I'm not going to bullshit you. It could happen. But I don't see it personally. Yeah, I was talking about David. Uh, when uh, Ellie, Ellie was kind of like an upgraded version of uh, David. She was like crazy. Hustle and motivate. Thank you so much for becoming a member, my guy. Thank you. He joined the silver tier. My homie right there. Thank you very much. Um... Hope you like the emotes and everything. We just uploaded those today. Um, yeah. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. That was Joe's lesson to her in death. What, to live more? I mean, yeah, true. But I thought, well, I thought her lesson was just like the big lesson they were trying to teach you was that revenge isn't everything. That's kind of what I, I took from that whole thing, which was okay. It was a cool lesson, but... At what cost, my guy? <laughs> At what cost? <laughs> you lost like half your characters here. Plus, all your newer ones, you kind of treated like trash in a sense. You don't really care about. Yo, we got Rafe jumping aboard, my guy. Thank you. Thank you for joining the bronze tier. Welcome. Thank you. Shout out to all the members, man. Appreciate y'all. But yeah, that's how I see it. He's showing off his pony badge. We got Xbox badges as well for Xbox dudes. We got y'all covered on the emotes. We got y'all. There you go. We got Xbox badges. What you mean? Everybody, Everybody's covered. <laughs> we got the whole shebang. Ain't just PlayStation. I didn't take, I ain't take it like that, man. I I ain't take her going, her experience, all that, and then going, yeah. Um, it's time for me to go for the cure. I didn't take, I, I didn't at least, I didn't, I didn't get that. Maybe you got that. I didn't get that personally. I thought it was something else. Dribble piss joining the damn members, my guy. Thank you. Welcome. Shout out to Dribble. Salute. Make sure y'all put RGT Army in the chat. The uh, emo for you guys. Are everybody in the? All the new members, welcome. Appreciate y'all. Hey, I appreciate the upgrade, Ray. Thank you. So now part of the silver tier. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, my guy. There you go. That's the new um the new RGT uh army logo. Um it's on the Discord as well. Think about putting that on the shirt for you guys. It looks really, really good. Let me know what you guys think about. It. <clears throat> Salute to you guys. Thank you. And then Billy, what's up, my guy? 
Uh, got three minutes. Less than four minutes. What game y'all looking forward to? Like, what y'all waiting for news for? Me personally, I'm okay with Horizon. I'll take a little bit of news on Horizon. Something like that. That'd be good. Big Cloud merchandise. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. For, just for you guys. We'll, um, we'll probably debut it. We'll show us all on camera wearing the shirts. And then that's when we'll announce it. We'll have it in the channel for you guys. So you guys can buy a shirt and whatnot. You guys want hats as well? We can do hats. We can definitely do hats. If you guys want it. We can most certainly make that happen for you guys. We've been we've been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes, man. Battle for six for you. Elden Ring? Really? Elden Ring? That kind of bro, that I don't know. I, I I don't know. I, I haven't I haven't seen much for Elden Ring. I can't really say much about it, bro. I really can't. <laughs> RGT rubbers. <laughs> Damn wallet. <laughs> I'm noticing you buy a deluxe edition of games after then you can get trophies all over again like final fantasy 15. hmm nice new signed game hopefully and the last signed game i personally well i know they had like a collection it was like a legacy thing way back but i remember before before that there was one where it was a um it was one where he turns into a werewolf yeah i remember that one I was like, what did they do to Sonic? They, like, low-key kill Sonic. Yes, I do need to see Dying Light 2 as well. Shout out to TX Gamer. Join the go tier, my guy. Thank you. Welcome to the channel, members, my guy. Welcome. Appreciate the support. Thank you. Welcome. Salute. Salute. <laughs> you want a Queen T-shirt? Oh, God. All right. Got two minutes. <clears throat> I don't think Returnal's here. Is ever going to see Kenna? The devs just tweeted the link. Really? Okay. Jacob! What's up, brother? Good to see you. How you doing? Good to see you. Team Improvement. What's up, my guy? Good to see you. Bro, is, is that game in, like, developmental hell or something? I remember it was coming out for PS4. Everything was going smooth sailing. And then immediately dies off, right? Like, they's like, oh, guys, by the way, that game is going to P uh, is going to PS5 and Series X and PC. So, uh, yeah, we're not doing the uh, cross-gen thing. I'm like, okay, cool. It's going to be dope. It's going to be all, it's going to benefit from all this stuff. We haven't heard a damn word from this game. It, it's killing me right now. I'll be damned. It's the ghost who walks. My guy overdone. What is up, man? Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. It's been a minute, man. This man legit is a ghost. <laughs> I guess YouTube decided to notify the ghost. Good to see you, though, man. Hope all is well. You've probably been playing that damn persona. Spot the hell your ass be disappearing on everybody. Am I right? On your 17th playthrough? Probably. It has been a while. It most certainly has been a while. Craig Karras, what's up, my guy? If I didn't say what's up to you earlier, my bad. I thought thought I did. What's up, my guy? Jack Knife in the building. What's good? Uh, Jedi Indie fan, what's up? All right. I'm going to turn the volume up for you guys. Let's get it. Better watch closely. Oh, yeah. I think it's about to get exciting. That was a weird anime. Dude was grabbing her ass. That was funny.
that Lord of the Rings? Oh yeah, we were supposed to get something for that. Lord of the Rings is going to be here, supposedly. Hello and welcome to the Future Game Show pre-show. Hi guys, I'm Stephanie Panicello, but you may better recognize me as Claire Redfield from Resident Evil 2. Luckily, I'm not on the yes, I do. today. Thank you, Leon. <laughs> I'm really sorry, though. I'm here to guide you through an exclusive first look at some exciting games from our friends at Dedalic Entertainment. The main show kicks off in just a few minutes, but why wait when we can dive into world exclusive reveals right now? To kick things off, here's Dedalic to tell us more about them and what they have in store. All right, so this is the pre-show. My name is Carsten Fechtelmann. I am the CEO and founder of Dedalic Entertainment. Welcome to our offices in beautiful Hamburg, Germany. Our team is currently working from home, but I am in the office, alone. Dedelic is now in its 15th year as a developer and publisher. Over the course of this time, our studio has created a long list of original games, from classical adventure games like Edna and Harvey, the Whispered World and the Deponia series to the tactical RPG Blackguards and the interactive adaptation of Ken Follett's Pillars of the Earth. We are very proud of our work, all the critical acclaim and awards that we have received over the years. And most of all, the fantastic support of our fans worldwide. Two years ago, we first announced that we will enter the world of Middle Earth with our new action adventure, The Lord of the Rings Gollum. Our goal yep, is Lord to the take Rings. this fascinating character and tell a story that offers a new perspective on this familiar tale while being faithful to the wonderful work of J.R.R. Tolkien. The game will be released in 2022. We are very excited to give you a first sneak peek at the end of this showcase today. Working as a development studio has also influenced our direction as a publisher. We understand developers and what matters most to them. That is why the teams we work with always have full creative control over their games, as we try to do our best to help them realize their vision. We are always looking for fresh and innovative new experiences. Games that engage players in deep storylines like the suicide of Rachel Foster or challenge their strategic abilities like in Shadow Tactics, Blades of the Shogun or Irato's Lord of the Dead. Or connect players all over the world Dark in fast-paced multiplayer action like Barrow Trauma, Witched or Unrailed, a game that you can play anywhere with anyone all over the world on PC and the consoles via crossplay. We are excited to share with you what comes next in our journey. Today we will provide you a closer look at some of the games coming in 2021 and beyond. New reveals and surprises along the way. One of the most beloved games, Shadow Tactics, from Mimimi Games is celebrating its five-year anniversary this Shadow December. Tactics. Shadow Tactics took players to Japan during the Edo period. With a group of five skilled specialists, you fight on behalf of the Shogun in a game that reinvigorated the hardcore tactical stealth genre. We're happy to announce our plans to return to Japan later this year. Take a look. How do you do it, huh? How can you act like nothing happened? I was forced to master my emotions at a very young age. Now, shall we begin? Let's finish this. Ready when you are. Ready, Aiko-san. Aiko's Choice is a standalone expansion for Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun, coming late in 2021. And you can wishlist it now on Steam. From the beauty of Japan, we now head to the bottom of the ocean, where horror lurks in the shadows, and every step you take may be your last.
What was that, like a puzzle game? Oh, that's pretty cool. Hurricane, what's up, my guy? What's up, honey? And Melissa H, what's up? If you're feeling brave enough, Hidden Deep is coming to early access in May. Wishlist it on Steam today to stay up to date on the latest developments. I'll let you in on a little secret. When I grow up, I want to be an android bounty hunter. You know, fast cars, crazy weapons, and endless villains to use them on? <laughs> Luckily for me, this next game makes all those dreams come true. And they're coming. All gun disputes keeping you up tonight. Matthew, what's up, brother? Do you want to love good? Hi, my name is Maciej. I'm the lead developer of Dark Lord. And today I will show you one of the missions from our game Glitch Bank. You'll get a sneak peek into the second episode, where three factions fight for domination. Brainwashed Ordo fanatics, an anarchistic biker gang called Reapers, and working class android rebels known as the Plague. The police already knows that something's very wrong on the streets of Baltia. Roadblocks and bounty hunters might soon show up. But if everything goes well, we will see this contract finished, earning some extra cash and perhaps a new tech. In Glitch Punk, your character progresses through new modules that give you new hacks, new abilities and passive stat increases. It allows you to mess with pedestrians, gang members and police officers in all sorts of ways. Instead of fighting solo against a group of enemies, it might be a good idea to start up a fight between gangs and police. Hacking system and branching storyline are the major features of the game. Right after this mission, there is a chance to push the story into one of two possible directions. All of that adds to the replayability of the game. Kind of reminds me of Transistor with guns. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation and keep an eye on our Steam page and Discord channel for more updates in the future. Yeah, it definitely reminds me of Transistor with guns. TX Gamer with the $5 Super Chat. He says the thing needs a remaster like today. I couldn't agree more. The thing would be fire as a game, bro. That'd be dope. Point and click adventure pedigree. And our next I'd be in for that. that tradition. So open your inventory like Among Us, but, you know, actually scary. World premiere. Shot the 300 people already in here. Hit that like button, guys. Hope you're enjoying this. Salute, my guys. Appreciate y'all. Oh, was there? Okay. <laughs> What's up, Shadow the Goat? Yeah, you haven't missed much, Aloy. What's up? Yo, facts, Shadow. Facts. No cap, this actually looks pretty good, art style wise. I actually like that. I like the look of that. My guy, no spamming in the chat, please. Thank you. Appreciate that, Mr. 4K. Shot the place. Well, let's go. I appreciate that, my guy. Yeah, we're feeling great, man. Feel better than ever, man. 
way more energetic. That's for sure. Them damn meds. That beautiful <sighs> adventure is coming to PC and awesome, man. Thank you. Next year. Okay. You're going to need a co-partner you can rely on in our next game. As two racers are connected by elastic. That's right. Elastic. What could possibly go wrong? Let's find out in this brand new announcement. My boy Juan in the building. What's up, bro? Split side. Oh, Ash. Okay, you gotta pick a side. What? Ash. Jazz, you, you started on the left and then you went right, Jazz. You well, that is on you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, no. Grab oh, no. Grab my okay, Let me oh, myself in this river. So I can actually talk. Am I undefin? One second, guys. Yep, I am. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just in case the guys want to jump in. Oh, we made that. Barely, we made that. Okay. Serious business. Serious business now. All right. Okay, this looks like um fall guys, but a little bit more loopier. <laughs> the way they're moving with this thing. How long is future gaming show? Um, this is the pre-show right here. So they said the main show is starting in three minutes. It's right there on the bottom, right? Check out the Stumped YouTube channel after our show. Link to the finished releases in the second half of 2021, and you and your friends can wish list it. I agree, super artists. I agree, man. Next up, I want you to imagine a strategy game designed by medieval monks. Storm Rider, what's up, man? Good to see you. Monks. I bet you weren't expecting Been to hear those words in today's show. This game is one of a kind. Make sure that bell icon, I guess. Glad YouTube had notified you. <laughs> you to be picky to with your boy. It's wild. Why do rabbits have swords and fight against You want to play in Minecraft? I never got into it, fam. She's pretty. This is the vestige of an ancient ritual. The ritual that we don't know yet, but that existed at the time. <laughs> they also they drew all this which is funny that's the crazy part coming to steam okay steam is closer and uh, it's something when that meds will play Inculinati hits PC later in 2021 so make sure to get it wishlisted on steam we revealed the first details of Lord of the Rings Gollum at the future game finally Lord of the Rings and today we're excited to take our very first look at gameplay from Lord of the Rings Gollum. Okay, guys, a triple-A game, Lord of the Rings. Maybe this will give us hope for Indiana Jones. Maybe. That's how it looks. <clears throat> it mustn't see us. My boy AT, what's up, fam? Good to see you. No, don't look at us. The precious is gone. Okay. It's up all the way. Yeah, it's up all the way. From ninjas in feudal Japan to oh. the darkest corners of Middle Earth, I hope you've enjoyed these sneak no, peeks and reveals. All the A huge thanks to Daedalic and all the developers who showed off their awesome titles. For updates on all of today's games, you can follow Daedalic Entertainment on Steam. I've been your host, Stephanie Panicello, and it is time for me to hand over to some other Resident Evil friends for the future game show. Take it away. All right, main show starts. Here we go. Future game show. My bad, I thought the volume was up. <laughs> I 
Yeah, that looked pretty mid, the golem. Maybe it's it's still being worked on. I don't know. No comment. Put my headset on so I don't echo. Hello and welcome to the Future Game Show. I'm Nicole Tompkins, though you may know me as Jill Valentine in Resident Evil 3. And today, we have an absolute monster of a show for you. And if I've learned anything about monsters, it's that they're best tackled with a partner. So please join me in welcoming my co-host, Jeff Shine. Hey, Nicole. And hey, everybody at home watching. My name is Jeff Shine, but you might recognize me as Carlos Oliveira from Resident Evil 3. Nick, I feel pretty good about this. I feel like it's nice to get the team back together. We do make a good team. Though, I mean, hopefully today's a little bit more even-handed because I tend to do most of the heavy lifting, fighting Nemesis like 16 times, getting the subway back on. Um, I hate to butt into the main show, but I think I had it pretty tough in Resident Evil 2. Two words for you, Mr. X. That's fair. The important thing is that nothing bad can get us at the future game show. So over the course of the next hour or so, we'll be showing you guys gameplay and trailers from upcoming games for PC and console for 2021 and beyond with some exclusive trailers and developer interviews. World premieres, exclusive trailers, and a few surprises in store. Let's kick off with our first world premiere. And I want you guys to wrap up, get warm, because things are about to get chilly. I guess, uh, oh wait, no, it's world premiere, so. World premiere. So, any word on Kai? Or his supposed crash? Don't. Please. Exclusive. Nobody's no. ruled it a crash anyway. They... They said it just vanished. I don't know, sis. Once is bad luck. Twice? Well... It's that damned robot. Always watching him. It's enough to drive anyone nuts. Yeah, well, short drive at least. Anyway, the whole thing smells off to me. Like, like a seven. Oh God, you don't think he couldn't have done this on purpose? Who knows? I never did understand that kid. Not, not really. Well, at least he's not alone this time. Little Charlie and Amelia though, they've been through so much already. better off without him. That's, that's what Kai said the last time we talked, but... Let's face it, the little brother's pretty messed up. And who the hell knows where it really is right now. Director at Goldfire Studios, and we're working on a game called Arctic Awakening. Arctic Awakening is an episodic narrative adventure game about the survivors of a plane crash in the unforgiving Arctic winter. Their story is one of survival, friendship, self-discovery, and the mysteries they encounter along the way. The year is 2062, and you play as Kai, an ex-Navy pilot who has retreated into isolation after recent traumatic events upend his life. He now finds himself in unknown territory with a missing co-pilot and only an AI drone to keep him company. Today, mm. we're really excited to share this exclusive gameplay from shortly after the crash. Kai is desperate to find Donovan, but the AI drone isn't about to let him just wander off into a blizzard without first starting a fire. Part of Alfie's job is never letting Kai out of his sight, and this tends to get under Kai's skin. Much of Arctic Awakening revolves around exploring the beautiful open world and uncovering the mysteries that lie within. However, the choices you make, or don't make, through your actions and fully voiced conversations directly impact how Kai's relationships with the other characters evolve.
Arctic Awakening is coming to PC, Mac, and consoles in 2022. Thanks for watching. Be sure to wishlist on Steam and enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks again to James for that exclusive first look at Arctic Awakening. Okay, Jeff, imagine being stuck in the same place in an endlessly looping cycle. Oh, Nicole, that is my entire 2020. Well then, you're gonna love our next game, as it's all about breaking free. Let's take a oh, look at Oh, finally we get some Eternal. Eternal. Let's go. They did good with the last trailer. Let's see how it looks now. Hello, my name is Mikhail Havari, and I am the Biz Dev and Marketing Director at Housemark. Currently, we're working on Returnal. Uh, Returnal, in a nutshell, is a fast-paced uh, sci-fi shooter with roguelike elements. And as a new addition to Housemark, we're adding a layer of narrative storytelling. That's... That can't be here. In Returnal, you take on the role of Selene. Selene is a deep space astro scout that crash lands on a planet called Atropos. Uh, on this planet, she quickly realizes that she's stuck in a never-ending nightmarish loop that always upon her death, she wakes up in the same place, but the world has changed and all the challenges that she has to face are different. At the focus of the game, we have a very tight gameplay loop where you uh, dash, jump around, shoot at uh, enemies with lots of tentacles coming at you. There are also uh, a lot of bullet hell elements, so fast-paced maneuvering, dodging, and running and gunning is the main focus of the game. But there are also lots of the storytelling layers hey, v, that Selene finds guy? out about What's up, son? What's up, uh, in a non-linear fashion. So Spencer, as you make your way through Atropos, you find out up, who your main character is, what is the sort of deepest uh, secret that she's trying to answer, and also how this planet ties into the whole bigger picture and who are actually the inhabitants of this mysterious planet. Overall, we at Housemark are looking forward to bringing you a very exciting and frenetic uh, shooter experience, and Returnal will be hitting PlayStation 5s on April the 30th this year. So looking forward to having the game out there. Hope you enjoy. Everything has changed. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The game changes dynamically when you die. So that's interesting. Exactly as I left it. I might, I might cop this. Uh, low key, I might cop this now. I might stream it on the channel. This looks good. Alright, cool. Yeah, Returnal. I I'll say they, they officially sold me on Returnal. All the way now. Definitely. Thanks to Housemark for taking us through the game. Returnal is coming exclusively to PlayStation 5 on April 30th. Yes, sir. Our next game is a love letter to JRPGs, set in a world where the past and the future collide on screen. But here in present day, we've got a world premiere of the newest trailer. Dreams. <laughs> I forgot about Mass Effect. Of yep, mother. got Mass Effect too. Long ago. We need to hurry up. We have to stop her. I do feel a connection. There's something there. I am Wilhelm the Wise. You, it seems, are a time mage. As am I. And while my powers have led to my youthful appearance, yours are the gift to see possibility. Who are you supposed to be? Hello, my name is... Tell me if we survive. You know how to fight? Hold your ground. They won't get past us. <laughs> so many questions. Matthias the Frog, at your service. I have been keeping an eye on you for some time now. I suspected you had been chosen, my dear. It appears I was correct. This will serve as a good opportunity for me to demonstrate my capabilities. I am certain I was created with a purpose. I wish to discover what it was. We'll have time for your banter later. Let's move forward. Hold on. <coughs> you have a talking frog? And you didn't mention it? A talking frog is like in my top five animals I want to meet!
<laughs> He's a wee of loose rejoice. Coming this July. Chris Tales is coming to consoles and PC in July this year. Now, back in 2015, Axiom Verge blew us cool, away with its retro Metroidvania action. Axiom Verge 2 is bigger and better, and the work of just one developer. So prepare to feel very lazy in comparison. Hello, I'm Tom Happ, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about my upcoming game, Axiom Verge 2. Okay. But first, a quick trip down memory lane. For anyone not familiar with the first Axiom Verge, here's a very brief synopsis. The story was a sci-fi adventure in which you play as Trace, a scientist who winds up in the world of Sudra. His mind is preserved by machines, and every time he dies, his memories are transferred into a new, cloned body. It's a love letter to some of my favorite games growing up, including Metroid, Blaster Master, Contra, and many more. Mm. When I crafted the story, I made sure to think deeply about the entire universe of Axiom Verge. How did it come to be? How is it related to our world? I ultimately decided to break the full story of the Axiom Verge universe into multiple parts with multiple perspectives, each intended to be its own game. And now, the next chapter is ready to be revealed. I don't want to spoil things too much, but most of Axiom Verge 2 is set before the events of Axiom Verge 1, but they are each standalone complementary experiences, so you can play them in either order. In Axiom Verge 2, you play as Indra, the mysterious billionaire behind the worldwide Globe 3 conglomerate. Hiding in Antarctica is what appears to be an ancient, alternate Earth, complete with mountains, lakes, deserts, and the ruins of a civilization. Mm. But you get the feeling that something else is lurking just past the fringes of reality, waiting to pull you in. Although Axiom Verge 1 and 2 flush out different parts of the same overall universe, their mechanics are quite different. The games share the same DNA, Great and fans of the first game will definitely feel right at home in this one. But make no mistake, this isn't just an iteration of the gameplay you saw in the first game. <clears throat> Oh, it is a complementary piece of the overall puzzle that is Axiom Verge. Now, it would be customary in a developer commentary to go into lots of detail about all the new and different mechanics and introduce new enemy types, bosses, and weapons, but I'm really hoping to avoid spoilers here. Even mentioning that there are spoilers is itself a spoiler. But one thing that does not change is that there are tons of hidden areas for you to explore and mysteries to find. So if you really like the feeling of figuring out deeply hidden secrets, I think you'll love Axiom Verge 2. Be sure to keep an eye out for Axiom Verge 2 when it launches on the Epic Games Store and Nintendo Switch this spring. Oh, okay. So Thanks I was on a Switch to Tom and, for that and PC. Tour. Axiom Verge 2 is due out on PC and Switch later in 2021. That's a good this gift for Switch. This game is what I'm all about. 60 Ninjas Enter. Only one ninja leaves. Are you going to be that one ninja? If I study this exclusive gameplay, anything's possible. Behold, Naraka, Blade Point. <laughs> yeah, Sav, he says, spoiler alert. <laughs> the game eventually ends.
Love that we get more samurai games after Ghost of Tsushima's uh, success. You'd love to see it. Cap, yeah, it looks dope. Hey, shout out to the almost, uh, shout out to the almost 500 of you in the chat, man. Hit that like button. Let's get a uh, 150 likes. Hope y'all enjoy the stream. I have it at 1440p as well for you guys. If you guys want to watch it even higher res. Unchained. Naraka Blade Point is developed by 24 Entertainment and is due to grapple hook onto PC this coming summer. Yeah, Next up is good. an open world action adventure that Might took kickstart by Storm back in 2019. And once you've seen it in action, you'll understand why. Here's Weston Tracy with an exclusive new look at Save. That's true, Overdone. Came a long way from 20 views back in the day. Good times. <laughs> Hi, Good times. I'm Weston, the Savior. director of the upcoming action adventure game Savior. In Savior, you play as Sam, a stranger with no possessions and no memory. As you explore, you'll discover your origin and your place among the characters you meet. You'll have to either battle, evade, or persuade your opponents into joining you in order to rebuild the broken world of Arcadia. At its core, there are three things that make Savior special. First is the combat system. It was inspired by playing years of Punch-Out on the NES. So you and many of your opponents have the ability to strike, dodge, and parry, which adds realistic strategy oh, not cool. really found in the genre. Opponents strike <coughs> fast, but they all telegraph their strikes, so you'll learn their attack patterns and surely best them over time. The early enemies don't block so well, so you can kind of button mash your way through. But as you progress, you'll need to watch for telegraphs and time your dodges, blocks, and counters carefully. Things get dicier when two <laughs> opponents attack at once. They'll always try to surround you, and it's best not to let them. That's pretty Next cool. Movement. I got this. Sam runs and jumps like many other 2D action game characters, but she does much more. With our addition of parkour, especially the ledge grab, she bounds through the terrain with a unique and satisfying fluidity. The dozens of animations and movement commands make movement a standout feature. Just running around is fun. Arcadia is a land divided. The Chosen have lived under the rule of their deity for a thousand years. They are led by the laws of the Creed, which dictates all areas of Arcadian life, especially the punishment for doubt or challenge. Any who oppose the Creed are banished and dropped into the depths of the planet. They are known as the Fallen. But the Fallen survived their banishment. They explored their underground home where they thrived. But the Chosen and the Fallen have been divided too long. It's up to you to reunite them. All of us at Starsoft are working tirelessly to bring the Savior to Steam and Nintendo Switch in winter of 2022. We hope you'll add Savior to your wish list on Steam, sign up for our newsletter, or follow us on social media to stay up to date on our progress. Damn, Steam eating good. That looks Savior good, though. Savior is coming to PC and Switch in winter 2022. I was coming to Switch as our well. Our next game okay. opened the very first future game show and had us itching to see more ever since. Please welcome Team Kill Media with a new slice of action from their console horror shooter, Quantum Error.
Quantum Mirror, people. About time you got some more info in that game. Switch over eating good. Finally, some official gameplay of Quantum Error. Let's go. Okay. Oh, you can switch to the third person? Kinda does give you Dead Space vibes a bit. That's cool. Said so the gun sound weak. Bro, I like the third person's perspective. That's really cool. Uh oh. This is definitely giving you the Doom vibes. Like the old school. What do you got to retrieve your squad when they die? Type gun. Okay, that low key reminds you of the BFG from Doom, does it not? That kind of reminds you of the BFG. That was cool. That was a cool that gameplay was just showcase. Four minutes of the terrifying Quantum Error, which is coming to PS5, PS4, and Xbox Series X and S. To see the extended cut of this demo, check out Games Radar tomorrow. Okay. The next exclusive trailer is unlike they anything you've seen before. It's a playable metal album where the action brings the lyrics to life. I'm Here's the newest that. trailer for Of Bird and Cage. Product not yet rated. That was pretty dope. Good to see actual gameplay of it too. It looks really good. I like the physics and uh, art style. Very nice. 
out to the 500 people in the chat. Salute my guys. Welcome. We can exclusively announce that Of Bird and Cage launches for PC on May 20th and PS4, Xbox One, and Switch later this year. You can wish list the game right now on Steam. No next Our next release? game hmm. is all about the power of cooperation. Like when I fight Nemesis and you shout advice from a safe distance? Yeah, I'd say it's pretty much exactly like that. Here's Joseph Fares to tell us how you'll be teaming up in the new adventure game from EA Originals, It Takes Two. Are you ready for the roller coaster ride of your life? No. no. My name is Joseph Farris, and I'm the founder, a writer, director at Hazelight Studios. And uh, Brothers of Tale Two Sons, A Way Out, and now the new game coming out, March 26. It takes two. Everybody, everybody, say it with me in the chat. Fuck the Oscars. That's the guy who said that at E3. Actually, oh no, the Game Awards, he said that. Fuck the Oscars! What I mean by that is that we're creating <laughs> co-op experiences that are written and designed from the beginning, from the start, like that. You do have co-op games out there, but none that are created like this in a narrative way. These are not drop-in, drop-out, which means that we can create unique experiences and unique stories that's very... Uh, there are situations in this game, I would say, that almost have a physical connection to the player as well. Uh, it's also uh, <laughs> something I think is underestimated what you can do creatively. <laughs> How come you get all the cool gadgets? Because I'm cooler than you, Cody. Sometimes uh, the connection could be a metaphoric uh, uh, connection. Like uh, we have a section where you're uh, playing as a piece of magnet. So that's a metaphor for attraction. <laughs> so whatever that happens in the story will be reflected in the gameplay. Uh, even an example like this, in this case, they are in a tree and the, the male character, the clay character, Cody, he forgot to clean the hive. So uh, uh, in real life, obviously. So the, right now, the squirrels that live in that tree are in war with the wasps. And you actually use the squirrels high tech weapons to, to take out the wasps. So, uh, and, and, and as you see, May can shoot matches and he can shoot sap. And when you combine those, you create an explosion. So again, it's, 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 it's a unique mechanic for every character that kind of connects to the story. That's why I keep saying whatever you meet in the story, whatever happens, you'll be playing it. This is just some example. What you're seeing here is just the mechanic for this level. And uh, you will be doing different things for every level you play. And whatever happened in the story, you will be playing it. I want to play this, but you need another player. Like, you need two people to play this. If you buy the game and you play it in a couch and you play with a friend for free, then it should be the same for you if you play it online. It wouldn't be fair just because your friend can play with you in the couch. This person have to pay double the price. You know what I mean? From that perspective, Friends Pass came up because it makes sense. It's a logical decision. 
Oh, that's dope. What is wrong with that guy? It's gonna be such a wild ride to play this game. It's gonna be such a unique experience from the beginning to the end. And it's gonna be a joy and adventure. I can't wait to look at some reactions uh, when the players stream this and play this because I know there will be definitely some really cool reactions, especially on some scenes and especially one scene that I think is gonna. This looks gonna fun. Be quite special. You feel it? All right, so the game is coming out uh, on March 26. It will be on, uh, let's see now, PS4, PS5, Xbox, Xbox One, I have to do it. Xbox X, Series X, and I don't know. Uh, but not Switch uh, for now. We don't have any plan for it now. Who knows in the future, maybe. But other than that, all the uh, future console, the next gen. Bruh, this dude. That was funny. <laughs> You'll be able to take advantage of Friends Pass when It Takes Two launches on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC tomorrow on March 26th. At least he was a script that he told you flat out. Our next game <laughs> is like Cyberpunk meets Sherlock Holmes as you crack cases in virtual worlds. Are you ready to play Digital Detective in Game Deck? World Premiere. He really is a legend, though. It's a strange profession. Game deck. You're neither a player, nor a detective. Mess a fuck the You know the rules and how people break them. How they leave a digital trail. And there is always a trail. A flaw in the source code. Back doors That's true, used Mario. by cheaters. That's true. Anonymity skins. Yeah. That's used true. to cover up unpopular activities. All can be found. All can be traced. With a lot of skill and a little bit of luck. Sometimes more than a little. Because there are surprises, even for a game deck. But in the end, you keep your eyes on the prize. The trail never gets cold. And so the game is always on. Game Deck is coming to PC September 16th, 2021. And you can wishlist it on Steam right now. Nicole, question. You think you got what it takes to be a firefighter? Yes. You want to maybe test those skills out in a game before trying anything dangerous? Also, yes. Well, then let me introduce you to Ember. Are you ready to join the gig economy? Become your own boss as a firefighter food delivery person, or a courier. Oh, no. Ember hits consoles. With cross-play functionality. For up to four players. Rescue together. Escape together. Deliver together. What the hell? <laughs> Boss fight together. What the hell? And salvage together. Risking uh, your life for money has never been more rewarding. So, 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 so basically, somebody turned DoorDash into a game. Low key. Ember launching summer 2021. Yeah, so basically somebody turned Ember DoorDash to a game. PC there you go. And Stadia <laughs> and is coming to consoles later this year. <laughs> Our okay. next game Let's... takes one of the best detective adventures of recent years and makes it prettier <laughs> and puzzlier. Yes, that's a word. Than ever before. This is Kathy Rain, the director's cut. <laughs>
Hi, I'm Arielle Siegel, and I am delighted to be here at the Future Game Show to talk to you about Kathy Rain Director's Cut. This is a game that excites me a whole lot because, well, first I play Kathy in it, but also because the Director's Cut is an even better version of the original game that launched in 2016. For those of you who have been missing out, let me fill you in on the details. So, Kathy Rain is a point-and-click adventure set in the 1990s. It's the story of a strong-willed journalism major, that's me, who is forced to confront her troubled past as she investigates the mysterious death of her recently departed grandfather. Armed with her motorcycle, a pack of cigs, and a notepad, Kathy delves into a local mystery surrounding her hometown that takes her on a harrowing journey of emotional and personal turmoil. The director's cut features an extended story with more puzzles to solve and new areas to explore. There's also an expanded and remixed soundtrack, cool new bike designs to unlock, controller support, and more. It's been almost five years now since Kathy was first shared with the world, and we've taken everything we've learned to give you the most complete realization of Kathy's journey yet. I, for one, love being a part of this project, and I can't wait for you all to get on the Catmobile when we launch this fall on Steam for Windows, Mac, and Linux. <laughs> Now the DX Gary says, anybody looking for DoorDash to take on full-blown fires? <laughs> uh. Bro, I could not get into that show. Jessica Jones, I could not get into it. Thanks to Ariel for showing us Kathy Rain, the director's cut, which is coming to PC later this year. Now it's time for a sneak peek at what's in store from our pals at Team 17. Oh, how many hours have I spent playing worms over the years? I once fought giant mutant worms in a sewer. It's a very different vibe, Nicole. It's a very different vibe. Worms Rumble, I remember this. Kings of Sea. You know what that reminded me of? What happened to Skull and Bones? You guys remember that game? What happened to Skull and Bones? Anybody remember? What happened to Scramble? Amnesia. Coming 2021 to Steam. Submit to me, I mean, submit your application to become my new cult architect when, honey, I joined the cult and her steam early access. We are not a dangerous organization. In fact, we're all about the safe sex.
So come join the inner circle when, honey, I joined a cult comes to steam early access. Interruption in. Oh, Lord. That was a collection of games coming from Team 17 over the coming weeks and months. For more info on them, check out gamesradar.com. Fifteen games in, and we finally get to fight some zombies. Is this in Back, for, back blood? for Blood? Let's go! Some back for Blood! Play, Let's Jeff? go! I don't know. These are looking a little faster than what I'm used I to. I wanted more info yeah, for this. Right. Let's go. Lucky for me, I've got developers Turtle Rock to show us the game instead. Woo hoo hoo, let's go! <laughs> Fucking Left for Dead reincarnate. Getting out of here is the key to my happiness. Oh, it looks even better. Everyone ready? Follow my lead if you can keep up. Just try not to do anything stupid. My Hello, bad, I'm guys. Leanne Papp and I'm the executive producer at Turtle Rock Studios. Right now we're working on Back for Blood, which is a first person co-op zombie shooter that takes place after a catastrophic outbreak where most people have either died or have been infected by what we're calling the devil worm. Uh, in this game, you're part of a group of veterans that we refer to as the cleaners uh, who are ready to take the fight back to the zombies, which we call the Ridden. They're buttons for punishment today. Oh, I miss Left 4 Dead, man. This is so good. Dinger! This is alpha footage that stars Fuck four of our eight cleaners. This. We've got Walker, I'm Evangelo, Hoffman, and Holly. And as you watch the footage, you're going to see that we have a lot of different kinds of ridden. We've got some base special ridden, like the Tall Boy and the Stinger. And then there are also mutated versions of them as well. But we've got something that's especially special for us that we're very much into and very excited about. And we feel that this is bringing something new to the genre. We have our ogre. He is this massive mutated ridden that Ooh. rises from the ground. And in that moment, you have to decide if you're going to face off against this tanky character or run away and face him when you're better equipped. Oh, this is not good. Just me or are these things getting bigger? We've got the elements that you want Everybody out in a cooperative zombie shooter. So you can gather up with your three friends and you're going to be taking out a bunch of Ridden. But we're also adding some rogue light elements with our card system that's uh, actually pretty cool and we think uh, provides a different spin on it and provides even more replayability to the game. So we okay. should definitely talk about our game director as well as our card system. You're going to be familiar with how we start off this game. You're going to start in a safe room with three of your friends and the game director is going to play what we call corruption cards. You get to know what kind of challenges he's going to throw at you and your team by looking at what these cards are. They might be things like swarm of bruisers or ridden on fire. And you then get to know exactly what it is that you're going to face. So after you see those cards, you're then going to be given a hand from a deck that you've built. And you need to decide what cards you're going to play. Coordination with your team is going to be super key here, as you can do things like improving the quality okay. of items and weapons that are found in the world. You can make it so your team can carry more Molotovs or med kits, or you can even do something cool like your team gets a burst of health when you get in capped. We're really excited to see what you and your friends do with your cards. Gotta be something around here. There you are. Nice. Back for Blood is coming to Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PS5, PS4, and PC. You're going to be able to play the game in the upcoming open beta on both PC and console. We're going to have more information on that soon, so stay tuned. Damn it, stop playing my emotions. Give me the damn date. Damn it. Woo, that look good. Let's go. Thanks to Turtle Rock for showing us how real zombie Ooh. killers do it. Ever wondered how it would feel to be a Warhammer miniature? Here's the world premiere of the new cinematic trailer for Warhammer Age of Sigmar Tempest Fall. World premiere. Oh, that was so good. Once mortal. We stood against enemies of order. Our souls freed from the weakness of flesh. 
arrived at the gates of heavens, shaped by righteousness, reforged in thunder, clad in living armor. We come down among lightning to protect the mortal realms once more. We are Sigma's wrath manifest. In his name, we wage war! We are the Stormcast Eternals. I can never get into this, like games like this. You can step into the shoes of a Lord Arcanum when Tempestfall launches on Oculus and Steam this summer. Hey, Jeff, uh, you remember the hospital siege in Resident Evil 3? Oh, how could I forget? Well, this next bit is a little bit like that, except instead of zombies, I'm gonna throw loads of games at you. Oh, that actually sounds way better. What y'all think about the show so far, guys? Like, out of 10, what would y'all give it? What's up, Gabriel? Okay, I've seen a lot of sixes. Yeah, I'll say that. It's definitely better to stay to play. Six, a six seems about right. Honestly, I'm, that's where I'm at, kind of. I think back for blood easily knocked it to a six. Guys, we got 500 people up in here. We only got 107 likes. What's going on here? Hit that like button. <laughs> we vibing up in this chat. We chilling. Good. Shout out to you guys. <laughs> For more information on all those great games, make sure to check out gamesradar.com. Yeah, Golem was now, a shot to the nuts. I don't know what the hell that was about. Than the sound of Jeff's I thought voice. I was expecting you more from Golem. should check out our Golem. next game, The Longest Ugh. Road on Earth. Bonus terrible. fact, this trailer contains an exclusive performance of one of the tracks in the game. That was Enjoy. absolutely terrible. I did not like Golem. I've been walking for a while, there's a hundred miles left to go A hundred miles left to go oh, oh. I swear, it's like the songs be like better than All half the way, gameplay for a lot of gotta try, dream of my baby feels alright Feels alright I've been walking for a while, there's a hundred miles left to go A hundred miles up. left to See you on RGT tomorrow Oh, oh. I've been running out of time. There's a hundred miles left to go. A hundred miles left to go. Oh, The Longest Road on Earth launches on PC later this year. Our next game is an open world survival simulator that put PC gamers through hell. Specifically, green hell. Here's an exciting new announcement from the team at Creepy Jar. Green hell. 
green hell. Ari, what's up, my guy? Wait, so Survivor has a game now? <laughs> it's on PS4, Steam, Xbox. Oh, okay. Can you survive Green Hell? Find out when it comes to consoles in June this year. PS4 still this getting low. This next game starred in our Gamescom show and tasks two cooperative spies to break into top secret locations. Well, then it's a good thing I've partnered with Jill Valentine, huh? Master of unlocking. Here's the latest news for Operation Tango. Oh, we got to work together. Hey, that's what I'm oh, talking dear, about. Oh dear, this is a recipe for disaster. What did you do? <laughs> I'm gonna hey, do. I'm gonna do it. You ready? I'm nervous. I'm in. I'm very stealthy. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm gonna need you to suck it up, Buttercup, and put that passcode in. Your infiltration begins on consoles and PC on June 1st. Coming up next, we take a trip into one of the deadly gauntlets of Oddworld Soulstorm, as series creator Lorne Lanning shows us what's in store in Abe's latest adventure. Hi, I'm Lorne Lanning, co-founder and creator of Oddworld, and I'm excited to be here at Future Games Show to bring you this abridged playthrough from Oddworld Soulstorm. At this point in the game, we're on a mission to hijack a train that we're told is at Fat Station. And so with each level, you get an introduction, usually of your goal happening in the background. And now we settle down to where Abe just entered into the scene. And now he needs to get to the Fat Station to hijack a Shout train. Shout out to TX Gamer. Shout out to Five and again. He says, I see you see this. Give Big Cloud a like, please. Flat. Thank you. I appreciate that, my brother. Thank you very much. Okay, so now you're approaching, you see a train in the distance pulling in, and now you're Yeah, I swear, this game, Oddworld, I, so I'm not, like, I never played Oddworld, but this game is in every show. You know you gotta hijack a train. Every show, you're guys. Have to get through the we always see Oddworld. So this is a lot of where we wanted more of the story telling us through the 2.9D camera. You so cannot escape this game. setup and that approach. It feels more cinematic. And here you can get an overlook, and if we look in there... This is the tanks and the whole area we're going to have to get through. And now you're dealing with snipers. You're running across steam vents. And I'm going to go down here. We wanted to get more of that sense of height and perspective. Looks and all good, that. And though. It also reveals secret areas that you wouldn't normally see where you can go collect goods and stuff. But we're not going to go there right now because we're just going to continue on and start going into the tank field because we still got to get to the pump so we can get to the train so we can complete our mission and then catch up with our buddies at the trellis area. Here's some classic Abe play where you know he's using steam zones to hide from the enemies and they can't see, they're kind of blind in the steam zone. So using the old odd world logic, if you can't see Abe, barely then neither can the enemies and this was a way that you could have traversed to get past this slick it looks good though graphically it looks really really good but if you use your if you crafted up some inventory to this point this would have been a stealth approach with no killing happening this would be a little more uh, not nice approach where you might have used something a little more lethal and that would be very nice, and you don't want to do that, of course. Oops. Uh, but it's a different way to solve the same problem. Insurance scam, Glockenstyle. <laughs> and along the way, we're hearing radio broadcasts that are telling us, filling us more in on the backstory, the propaganda of the world, what they're telling the common people versus what you know is actually happening in the game. So we play off of that during these elevator rides. And if you pay attention to them, you get a little more data on the backstory and what's happening in the world. We're getting now to the pump area. There's all these more physical challenges where there's Mudokans you're gonna have to get in through the pump all the way up to the train way above. Look at 
So now this is like a tower of hazards, and you're gonna get more and more Dawkins to go through here with you. And you're gonna try not to get them killed, or yourself. We cabled the world, and when these cables are pulled and activated, you'll see the pulses running. So it really helped with people understanding what the problem, the, the puzzles were here in cases like this. So you're getting more and more Mudokins following you through more and more dangerous conditions. <laughs> and they're stacking up more and more. And the more you get, the easier it is to get lots of them more killed, even though you shouldn't. Come back, go, 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 go. Okay. <laughs> and killing them, of course, is not the best karma. Here to break you up. <laughs> this guy sucks. Oh. Clearly, there's a pattern you gotta follow. And now, well, you only got there with what? Two? One? <laughs> One survivor. He gets rescued. And from here, and look at all my dead guys, but from here, this gets us up to the area of the train station where we can now access the train that will then lead us on our mission forward. I'm doing what, Xbox One? So we don't... Oddworld Soulstorm is coming to the PS5, PS4, and the Epic Game Store April 6th. You can pre-purchase the game now on the Epic Game Store, and PlayStation 5 PS Plus members will be able to download the game at no extra cost. How Oddworld much is Soul it? Storm is coming to PC, PS4, and PS5 on April 6th. First revealed at the okay. Future Game Show last June, Serial Cleaners builds on the hit crime scene cleanup with four distinct cleaners and four distinct styles. Let's see a uh, messier approach in our first gameplay reveal. World premiere. Now, I didn't understand your question, Jim. Is he trying to get rid of the? Oh, okay, you're you're getting rid of the body. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is he doing? Wow, cereal cleaners. <laughs> it's on PC, of course. Oh, it's coming to console. Grab your mop and your rubber gloves because cereal cleaners is coming to PC later this year. You can wishlist the game on Steam and Epic Store now. Oh, God. In space, no one can hear you scream. But neither can they hear you say, whoa. Which is exactly what you'll do when you see the amazing things Frontier is doing in Elite Dangerous Odyssey. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. What time is this, John? I forgot about the IDX box. Man, we have a lot to talk about in RGT tomorrow, that's for sure. Oh, make sure you guys hit that bell icon. Select all. We're doing a massive giveaway for tomorrow. Uh, we're giving away two $100 PSN cards, as well as two Xbox Live uh, $100 gift cards for you guys. Uh, to celebrate 3K followers. So, you guys want in. Make sure you tune in. Also, to get in, you have the, um, there's a tweet on my Twitter where it says the giveaway. Just either like or retweet it to get in. And organic life well, forms now the winner tomorrow. missions and engaging in intense first person combat. Or the winner. Today, we're really excited to share this exclusive footage of Apex Interstellar. Welcome to Apex Interstellar, your gateway to the stars. Are you working tomorrow? Damn. will be available to all Odyssey players, allowing them to explore the galaxy in a totally yeah. new way. For a small fee, Apex Interstellar will let players book their own personal shuttle complete with AI pilot to take them between the ports and settlements in inhabited space. Your shuttle is ready to RGT is 5 p.m. Thank you for choosing Apex Interstellar. 
players could even call a shuttle to pick them up directly from a planet surface, just like you'd hail a cab. Additionally, we'd like to talk about how the release of Odyssey will give players the opportunity to experience the excitement, scale and beauty of Elite Dangerous from a brand new perspective. Odyssey's boots on the ground gameplay will add on foot exploration, salvaging, bounty hunting, heists and much more, all seamlessly integrated into the existing game. Elite Dangerous Odyssey is coming to PC in late spring 2021, with an alpha scheduled to begin a little earlier on the 29th of March. PlayStation and Xbox releases are planned for autumn 2021. Season. Thank you for watching. Please enjoy the rest of the show, and we look forward to seeing you in the game. I guess that's interesting, Odyssey. Ugh. So on PC, March 29th. Thanks to Gareth for that look at the game. The Elite Dangerous Odyssey Alpha will be available on PC starting March 29th. Imagine what you could do with a machine that can read memories. That's the killer setup of Don't Forget Me, a new adventure game from the Moon Pirates and- Most of my memories involve being chased by a giant mutant. Oh yeah. You remember that time the bug like laid eggs in you? Ugh, we don't. Talk about it, Jeff. Home at nine. Okay. Don't forget me launches on PC later this year. Next up, let's look at two new titles from movie games. The Polish studio is teaming up with Platige Image, who are famous for their work on Ubisoft and Sega CGI movies. Look out for more info on that in the summer. And here's what movie games are working on right now. The Great War didn't start as something we were worried about. We had no idea how it would change when they sent us directly to the front line. And into the chaos. And then in the mud and drama of trench death, we learned how to survive. And how to choose between life and death. Because every saved life counts. PS5, Xbox, is a, okay. Movie Games says you can look forward to hearing more on War Hospital and Fire Commander later this year. Our next game debuted on Stadia and is finally coming to other platforms. To find out why Lost Words Beyond the Page is such a special world, let's join director Mark Backler and writer Rihanna Pratchett. Uh. 
Hi, I'm Mark Backer. I'm the founder of Sketchbook Games and the creative director of Lost Words Beyond the Page. I'm Rihanna Pratchett. I'm a writer for video games, film, TV and comics, and I wrote the script for Lost Words Beyond the Page, and I'm working on lots and lots of secret things. At the moment, we're just putting the finishing touches to Lost Words for uh, Steam, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. So you play the game as Izzy, who is about sort of 11 or 12-ish, and she's just been given a journal for her birthday. She's always wanted to be a writer, so she starts writing. She, she has to deal with some difficult news about her gran, uh, who gave her the journal in the first place, and she decides to write a story to cheer her gran up. We see her go not just on a journey through the, the pages of her diary, but also through the fantasy world that she's been writing about. The story starts to kind of reflect what's happening in the real world. Then we use things like the seven stages of grief as art inspiration, as music inspiration, as puzzle inspiration. And it's basically, you know, fantasy is a lens through oh, which God. we can examine the real world. And this is a very um, kind of a very visual representation of that. The two worlds in the game play into each other in a, a number of different ways. So uh, the things that happen to Izzy in her real life end up having repercussions in the fantasy world. We also see these little post-it notes on the desk around the diary that um, sort of show the evolution of some of the characters that you'll later be bumping into in Astoria and uh, different ideas that Izzy has had. The game is uh, split into like eight main chapters. Each one of those begins in the pages of the diary and then transitions into the, the world of the story uh, sort of halfway through. Lost Words is out on the 6th of April on Steam, PS4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. So you can uh, jump onto Steam and uh, wishlist it right now. Thanks to Mark and Rihanna for that exclusive look. Lost Words comes to PC and consoles on April 6th, and you can wishlist it now. In space, no one can hear you scream, but neither... Whoa, uh, Nicole, Nicole, we just... I already used that intro. Oh, really? Our next world premiere is set in space, and it looks really spooky, so I just... I thought, like... Oh, Honestly, you, you had me at world premiere, so you could probably just cut it there. World premiere. In the second era of the human empire, sonic matter was discovered in the galaxy of Netaran. It was here that humans decided to build the Metal Mother facility to harvest the sonic matter, the most precious element in the universe. But it wasn't long before they discovered they were not alone. Oh, don't even start with the inside Xbox. I do remember that. Yeah, I saw the Snyder Cut. It was good. It was pretty good. Shit. Coming to Steam. Yo, Steam overheating good. That was our first look at Haunted Space, coming to PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S sometime in the future. One Steam review describes our next game as Reservoir Dogs with more falling over. Well, I guess I'd be oh, Mr. Boy. Interested. <laughs> Okay, it's time for guns, cars, and double-crossing galore in Cryptic Sea's truly unique Sub Rosa.
go time. We're pleased to confirm that Sub Rosa is available right now through Steam Early Access, so you can start building your criminal empire today. Okay, I hope you have your hankies ready as we return to one of the most emotional games. Come on, we already saw years. Life is Strange. Please couple days welcome ago. Zach Garris, Chief oh. Creative Officer of Deck Nine Games, to give us a new look around Haven Springs. They're definitely hiding something. Alex, be careful. I am Zach Garris. I am the Chief Creative Officer at Deck Nine Games and the Game Director of Life is Strange True Colors. It's a brand new adventure in the Life is Strange universe. Uh, coming off the heels of Making Before the Storm, we wanted to explore you know, who we are as storytellers and what the franchise has to offer fans uh, with new characters and, and a new setting. And we're, we're really excited about it. Well, what do you think? I love it. So in Life is Strange True Colors, you, you play as Alex Chen. Alex is a young woman who's just left the foster care system. She's had a very difficult childhood, but she's also now about to start something new, be out on her own and reunite with her older brother. Alex is not like other people though. Alex has a supernatural sensitivity to the emotional states of others. And it's not just the ability to read, or be aware of other people's emotions. If people around her are feeling rage or grief or terror, the emotion overwhelms Alex and she feels it too. It gives her an empathic connection with that person. It gives her insight into what's motivating whatever that person might be going through. Up until this point in her life, this has been a curse. This has alienated her from others. This has led to behavior people around her don't understand and probably mostly condemn. Welcome to Haven. For, for Life is Strange True Colors, we wanted to um, explore having more agency given to the player in terms of where they go, who they interact with, um, and the ownership that they can take over the story and over Alex's engagement with that town. And so we, we have um, built out a larger space than you typically see in a Life is Strange game. and. I think we're, we're very excited about um, the outcome and the, the result. Alex, right? I'm Steph. Um, one, one of the most exciting components to Life is Strange True Colors is that um, Steph returns as a character. She was uh, someone we discovered while making Before the Storm, a character that became a fan favorite. We wanted to really take that character and do much more with oh, her. Oh, she was only in and like... Partly it's a desire to continue to honor the depth and richness of the universe overall, that this is an interconnected place and that you're going to see from time to time characters from other adventures. This I think part of what's really promising about the Life is Strange universe is its breadth, its depth, its potential, new stories, different walks of life. We're really shifting the franchise into a more of an, of an anthology series. And so rather than order the titles sequentially, when they're not actually sequels necessarily, uh, it made more sense to name each each game according to what that story is and, and how that story is sort of participating in that larger universe. True Colors just fits for what, what Alex Chen's story becomes. I'm glad you two met. Is this dude my best friend? And this dude hands me the best beers? <laughs> when it comes to romance, uh, Life is Strange True Colors offers players more choice than they've experienced in a Life is Strange game to date. And we're, we're, we're proud of that. I think we're excited about 
the kinds of relationships that you can develop throughout the whole town and then in particular the relationships that you can have with both Ryan and Steph who are integral to the storyline and in the shape of how the player chooses to engage with them in that story can become um, sort of romantic interest for Alex. Life is Strange True Colors will be available in September on current and next-gen consoles and PC. Well, I'll be getting emotionally wrecked when Life is Strange True Colors launches too, in hilarious. September for next-gen consoles and PC. Five years ago, developers LKA wowed us with their psychological horror, The Town of Light. In 2021, they return with an all-new next-gen psychological thriller. Are you ready for Martha is Dead? Martha is dead. Jesus. Will you tell me a bedtime story? Not tonight. There's a fall. You should have been there. Not her. Martha is Dead, published by Wired Productions, comes to PS5, Xbox Series S and X, and PC in 2021. Do you ever look at the state of modern civilization and think, God, I could do so much better than this? Uh, uh yeah. I mean, have, have you seen 2021? Well, time to put your money where your mouth is in Amplitude Studios' historical strategy epic, Humankind. With Amplitude, wanted to create these huge, amazing horror games. Uh, games that would dust off the genre, a uh, genre we love so much. In Humankind, you have one main innovation, which is the ability to create your own civilization out of 60 different cultures. The idea is that we give the player these historically accurate bricks, and they go and build whatever story they want to. In history, we always had a group of people close to each other. With the plus, we want to give you all these tools to, to be able to interact with these empires, to, to create a bond and a link, to create uh, these alliances or have to go to war uh, with them. What was really important for diplomacy was the, the stories that players would tell each other. If you look at, uh, say, the, you know, the First World War, what happened, you know, it wasn't a, a direct engagement immediately. There was a lot of people getting roped in, you know, uh, alliances playing off against each other, you know, um, negotiations. So, you know, in, in order to be historically authentic, you know, we needed to add a little bit more, you know, more tools in the player's toolbox, you know, things like bribe or propose, uh, threaten, demand. We, we want things to feel, you know, nicely, nicely immediate, you know. We don't want to have sort of a round-robin vote of everyone uh, deciding what to do. You know, we, we want you to get feedback interactions, make things feel uh, nicely, quick, immediate, impactful. Your civilization needs resources uh, in order to build uh, units, uh, to build infrastructures, and to boost its economy. You can acquire these resources either aggressively, you know, by claiming territory and uh, exploiting them yourself, or you can buy them from another civilization. When a civilization's choices create a situation that is deemed offensive or otherwise unacceptable by another, a grievance is generated, transferring control of a border territory, paying a sum of money, changing a law or religion, joining a war, and so on. If the demand is refused, it can be used to justify declaring a war or breaking an alliance. Once two civilizations have uh, declared war, uh, they'll need to think about their population's support for this war or morale. This is a value that will uh, tend to decrease over time because people get fed up with uh, fighting a conflict. Um, you can also damage the other side's morale by winning battles against them, by occupying their cities. In humankind, uh, your empire's choices with regards to events and uh, the civics that you choose uh, will define your empire's ideology. So depending on these choices, I'll have an 
ideology that will be defined. Based on this proximity, uh, it will be more or less difficult to go to war or to sign peace treaties. So, for instance, two civilizations that are very close will have trouble maintaining a war, but it will be a lot easier to sign treaties because the populations feel uh, a certain sort of brotherhood. In the diplomacy of humankind, the possibilities are endless. You want to, to, to create a oh, culture man. that will attract the sympathy of all these other empires? Uh, will you be feared by your neighbors? It's up to you to decide how you will mark history as a leader. Oh boy. Humankind. August 17. Sega. Okay, that one I can't wait to get my hands on. What have we got coming up next, Nicole? Our next game was the breakout star of last month's PlayStation Let's State of go. Play. To Finally. tell us more about the limb snapping kung fu combat of Sifu, Sifu. please welcome developers Slow Clap. Something good, finally. <laughs> Jesus. Hi, I'm uh, Pierre. I'm from Slow Clap Studio, an independent game studio based in Paris, France. In Sifu, you play the role of a young Kung Fu student who is on a path for revenge after his whole family was assassinated by a squad of five mysterious assassins. And you will be on the hunt for the assassins of your family through five uh, main environments. And as you move through these levels, you will have to use uh, every tool at your disposal, whether it's your Kung Fu skills or uh, everything that's in the environment to survive and prevail in dangerous combat situations. So you may have seen our real trailer in the recent State of Play, and uh, today we're excited to share some more information about the game regarding so uh, combat. As you progress through the game, you'll encounter five bosses who are all connected to you and who are basically the assassins of your family. These five bosses have been inspired by uh, Kung Fu values and the five elements of Chinese mythology. Um, so this is the wood, fire, water, metal, and earth. Oh, this elemental attacks? Okay, that's dope. As you saw in the trailer, when your character dies, he revives instantly where they fell. And when your character revives, your character will age every time. Kung Fu is um, means literally uh, mastery through practice and this is really an important theme of the game because we want players to feel like they've learned kung fu as they've played the game and like actually gain this mastery sifu is meant to be a challenging game for sure there is a limit to um, how much you can age of course and they will be discussing more about what exactly happens when you do have that game over in the coming uh, weeks and months uh, prior to launch. Sifu will be released in 2021 on PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and on the Epic Game Store. Bro, I, I'm getting, like I said before, I, I do get sleeping dogs, like vibes from this, 2021. All right, it's cool. Yeah. I have my eyes on Everyone this Everyone will be Kung Fu fighting when Sifu hits PC, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5 later in 2021. Yeah, that's going to be fire. And that brings our spring showcase to an end. I want to okay. see a huge thank you to... Whoa, 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 Nicole. Nicole, come on. Look, we can't end it there. What's right, good, In true Puck? Resident Evil fashion, there's always got to be one final boss form to fight. You're right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can find one more surprise. Okay. Roll the tape. What's the big surprise? Kenna! Yeah! We got Kenna gameplay again. All right, new showcase for Kenna. I know you are kind. You sense the power that this game looks so fucking this good. Land. Yet, you do not fully understand it. This looks so fucking good.
of a spirit guide is a lonely one. Oh, it's on PS4 too? Oh yeah, for, they, they, they did say that. I forgot. August 24th. Okay. And that definitely wraps up our show. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching. Special thank you to Nicole and a very, very special thank you to the amazing developers who helped make this happen. You can head over to the Future Game Show page on Steam to add your favorite games from today's show to your wish list. And don't forget to check out GamesRadar.com for all of your news, guides, and features. I'm Jeff Schein. And I'm Nicole Tompkins. And this has been the, the third. third. Shout Game out to game. Jay Bari in the chat. Thank you for coming to remember my guy, joining the Silver Tier. Thank you. Thank you, fam. I appreciate you. Thank you. Salute. Make sure you guys check out my homie Jay Bari. Good dude. Great channel. <clears throat>